Good evening, welcome to Have I Got News For You, I'm Frank Skinner. In the news this week, BBC Breakfast presenters discuss a busy morning interviewing Bernie Eccleston and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> At a hotel in Morecambe, with a party of Scots arriving, staff quickly hide any material that may offend them. <laughs> <laughs> and in Doncaster, Mrs. Ivy Hinchcliffe still hasn't come home from bingo. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a comedian and former political advisor for the Labour Party who does an impression of Tony Blair. In fact, he's so good he managed to get his fee for tonight's appearance up to half a million quid. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Matt Ford. And with Paul tonight is an actor and comedian who lists his hobbies as tea tasting, fly fishing and cricket. The last time he saw his doctor, he tested negative for adrenaline. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Miles Jump. <laughs> and we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Matt, take a look at this. It's the uh, bell end. <laughs> That's uh, Chancellor going underground. This is the spending review. It's a triumph for the Chancellor. He's announced that he's got a fifth of the spending already sorted out. Which is brilliant, so only 80% of it yet to do. <laughs> so far, the deficit this year is right down to 120 billion. That's 120 billion pounds we've borrowed more than we've earned. So you can see we're really getting to grips <laughs> with the debt. And we're not at all bankrupt, except a lot. <laughs> so, um, health spending will be unaffected by uh, budget cuts. Um, why is that particularly welcome this week? So that A&Es aren't even more stressed? Mm. Even fuller? Yes, there was um, uh, research into operation time that yes. suggests you are more at risk of dying in hospital on a Friday. So if you're watching this on repeat, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to go in on a Monday. And then the probability goes down until the weekend when everyone's off. But it's, it's terrifying. It's DIY, Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> they literally give you the tools. What's the latest thing to make people feel poorly? This is back into the financial era of things. It's money. If you eat coins, do you, do you throw up? If you eat coins, do you throw up? Let's yeah. find out. <laughs> <laughs> Nickel allergies are on the increase. And uh, 5p and 10p coins now have four times more nickel in them than a year ago. So according to research, people are more at risk who keep 5p and 10p pieces in their hands for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Problems particularly bad in Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's David Cameron been up to while all this has been going on? He... He went to Ibiza. Yes. How's he going to blag having gone to like one of the world's most notorious clubbing hotspots at a time of national crisis? Are there a lot of seals there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a bit unfair. What, on him? Yeah. I mean, the Prime Minister's got to have a holiday. It's not as though he'd do anything if he was here. Uh, <laughs> I mean, do you feel safer with him in Ibiza or here? <laughs> I'm not too bothered, really. <laughs> and it, I mean, it is unfair. I mean, because everyone said Churchill used to go on holiday. I'm in the middle of the Second World War. He went off to Marrakesh and mm. took swimming holidays. Mm. And no one said, Churchill, what a bastard. <laughs> Hitler wasn't too complimentary, but generally <laughs> speaking. <laughs> Got a picture of the Camerons on holiday? Oh, it's charming. It's lovely. But they're not really holiday... It's not holiday garb, is it? They're goths, the Camerons. <laughs> <laughs> Surely he could have worn a Hawaiian shirt or something of that nature. Maybe oh, can you imagine the tabloids if he'd worn a Hawaiian shirt? How sickening! Yeah, you're quite Terror right. Terror stalks the land and Cameron wears an amusing shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what a bastard! <laughs> so while things were stirring up in South East London with EDL marches following the terror attack, what did some people on Twitter do? This is the trouble with Twitter. People get very excited very quickly, don't they? and they decided to protest against EDF. Yes. <laughs> I thought the brilliant EDL story was not the one in London, but the one in York, where the EDL, they marched 
on this mosque in York. The furious men outside. They got to the mosque and the people in the mosque invited them in for tea. <laughs> <laughs> and they had tea and biscuits, an impromptu game of football. Yeah, that was. And they mutually agreed that mm. perhaps, you know, um, understanding was the way forward, and then they, they went off. Yeah. yeah, the Archbishop of York, John Sentamu, said. Tea, biscuits and football are a great and typically Yorkshire combination when it comes to disarming hostile and extremist views. <laughs> On the subject of political ambition, who did David Cameron's old spin doctor Andy Coulson warn him to beware of? Old uh, Boris Johnson. Yes. It was an odd phrase, wasn't it? It was about Boris won't intervene before the election, but he's happy for him to lose it. Word to that effect. Yes, this was... I mean, Andy Coulson, who... Is, is, has been charged with various offences, mm. um, but he's still allowed to give interviews in GQ. I mean, we're not allowed to say anything about him under the laws of contempt, obviously, and I wouldn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> is there, if we are so wary of words, is there any way you could express an opinion through contemporary dance? <laughs> <laughs> you'll get sued, you'll get sued. <laughs> At last, someone could go to prison for mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. With the economy going down the pan faster than a Chinese baby, George Osborne... <laughs> it's a happy ending. <laughs> it's, uh, George Osborne is calling for further cuts. One minister refusing to agree to any cuts at all is Environment Secretary Owen Paterson. According to one colleague, Owen doesn't want to go down in history as the man who endangered Britain's flood defences. Don't worry, Owen. You won't go down in history. <laughs> <laughs> Boris Johnson was recently described by his former boss, Conrad Black, as a sly fox disguised as a teddy bear. Yes, he's both cunning and found propped upon the pillow in many a woman's <laughs> bedroom. <laughs> Paul and Miles, take a look at this. I think it's, oh, this is Camilla, the Duchess of Cornwall, navigating her way around a train. These are these bastards who come and sit with you, even though there's loads of empty seats. <laughs> <laughs> She, she went to France this week, she was in Paris, and uh, she made her first speech in French, and she was a bit nervous about it, but it went very well. Everybody was very happy, they said, oh, nobody's ever spoken French like this before. Uh, it is wonderful, <laughs> she's a golden creature that seems the babe in heavenly light wherever she goes. <laughs> she smokes fags as well. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> it's correct. <laughs> and before she set off, she had a word with the press, and sounded extremely confident about how well her first solo trip would go. My first solo trip. Brilliant. My Give first solo <laughs> Probably my last. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, and it would have been had the Duke of Edinburgh's men not been waiting in the wrong tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> I just, sorry, I just couldn't think of a mind for it. <laughs> Did you spot which form of transport she used to get to Paris? She was on a train, so unless that was wildly misleading, I'd say that's how she got there. <laughs> <laughs> It was any particular train. The, 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 the one that goes show. to Paris. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is setting off, all looking very happy. And if you're wondering who's in charge of her luggage, it's this person. <laughs> <laughs> Why was she going to Paris exactly? I don't know. I, it, was, it, it didn't really grab me at the time, and uh, my ability to manufacture interest in this story is quite <laughs> 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 she was there to see the work of charity Emmaus, of which she's the patron. Oh, yes. Yes. Homeless people, isn't it? Yeah, well, according yes. to the Daily Mail, it helps people by giving them a purpose, a reason to get out of bed in the morning. Mm. So they found her. <laughs> <laughs> what did Camilla unexpectedly get from Sir Peter Ricketts? Ricketts. <laughs> <laughs> he bought her a fake Cartier watch she'd been admiring in the charity's second-hand shop. Here they are together. He looks very dodgy, doesn't he? <laughs> and she looks like... Can you get me away from this? <laughs> he looks like he comes with a watch. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, what were two men in the French city of Montpellier the first to do? Ah, two gay guys in, in France would be the first uh, gay couple to get married. Vincent and uh, Bruno. I was staggered. I had no idea Bruno was seeing other people. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> who pays for the ceremony in a gay wedding? You know, the traditional, it's the woman's dad. You're not for a while, though. Is that, has that gone? Well, <laughs> unless I was particularly unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> 
In other royal news, how did the Queen pose for a photograph showing that she belonged to the ancient order of the thistle? Oh, there's a striking dramatic photograph on the Scottish moors, isn't it? Really? It looks like something you should see on a tea towel. <laughs> <laughs> I will be one day. Yes, this is the Queen in a Scottish glen. There we are, look at that. Looking delighted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She well, does not know much about hill walking. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh. When I said take the train to Scotland, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> it was for a book called Keepers of the Kingdom. What did the book's author Alistair Bruce fear would happen during the Queen's photo shoot at Balmoral? Midges. Yes. He thought the Queen would be put off by midges, and he explained there are two stages of a midge attack. Mm. <laughs> in the first, you think you're going to die. In the second, you're worried that you might not. <laughs> Which is also the Queen's experience during the two halves of the Royal Variety Show. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, what is happening to Prince Harry? He's worried that he's going to go bald? Yes. That looks like no. a fine head of hair to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, to Prince Philip, he never lets us down. So, um, what's his latest gaffe? It's a small council flat in Newport. <laughs> <laughs> During a visit to a medical research laboratory in Cambridge, he asked a Polish scientist, did you come here to pick raspberries? <laughs> He's mellow, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, you'll miss him when he's not there. <laughs> well, I feel you, Kipper, filled that gap. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, this is Camilla's first solo engagement abroad. Camilla's trip to Paris was very successful, the only downside being that when she got home, she found the floor covered in takeaway cartons and beer cans. Don't you hate that, girls, when your bloke's just too lazy to ring for a <laughs> footman? <laughs> France has seen its first gay marriage, which has sparked a heated national debate, and according to The Guardian, a 30% rise in homophobic acts, including a tour by Jim Davidson. <laughs> <laughs> the next round is the strengthometer of news. <laughs> Fingers on Boz's team, here's the first one. We saw this picture last week or something similar to it, but now we seem to have an owl, is it? Getting that... married to a mop. Yes. <laughs> this is Lightning the Owl, who's in love with a mop. Um, it said the mop has really turned the owl's head. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how this love affair blossomed? It was either behind the scenes at Owl World oh. or mm. Mopland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the biggest attraction in the Huddersfield area. <laughs> Well, the owl has been hand-reared in Newquay at the Screech Owl Sanctuary. Oh. And what's brilliant about that is that you'd assume it was a sanctuary for screech owls, but you'd be wrong. It is, in fact, an owl sanctuary run by... Carolyn Screech. <laughs> <laughs> Similar confusion when Lord Dangerous brought in the Dangerous Dogs Act. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Lightning the Owl with his new best friend. That looks like quite an abusive relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's he's biting her. No, that's grooming, clearly. Well, he's a paedophile, then. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you once uh, dressed as a chicken, didn't you, um, for uh, various reasons? <laughs> I was working for the Labour Party at the time. Is that compulsory? <laughs> it, it was on a by-election campaign. Uh, in 2004, and I would just walk around behind Charles Kennedy dressed as a chicken, whilst a woman on a megaphone would go, Lib Dem, soft on crime, soft on thugs, soft on drugs, and I'd sort of dance like a chicken would. Mm. Um, to music like that! <laughs> what, and, happened, um, what happened in the by-election? Uh, we lost the by-election. <laughs> <laughs> I suspect Charles Kennedy is watching this and thinking, oh, it was real, that <laughs> joint chicken! <laughs> <laughs> what was the... <laughs> you probably thought I was the famous grouse. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Does, does everyone have to do this when you start working? I mean, is it a sort of an initiation thing? All, yeah. <laughs> all the people at the top now, did they have a, a time when they had to dress as sort of poultry around the East <laughs> Gordon Brown walked around as a pigeon for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to do with politics as one of his hobbies. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. 
Oh, yes, as your mock up as there is Simon Cowell and Bruce Forsyth. Bruce has made a comment about the, the young children that appear on uh, Is It Britain's Got Talent? Is that mm -hmm. the latest version that's going at the moment? So, yes, it seems to be sort of like, you know, it, it's a quite a hard thing to ask these, these young kids to go out there and sing live and all that sort of thing. It's a bit of a pressure. And I think he's complained about that. And uh, Simon Cowell says, it makes me loads of money, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's the clash of the Saturday Night Titans. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Big Brucey versus. Super Simon. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really do tabloid. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'll give up now. What's, um, it, what's it in Latin? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ad nauseam. Um, <laughs> yes, Bruce said, I don't think young children should be on Britain's Got Talent. Although it's also wrong to put adults through an ordeal like he's strictly opening monologues. <laughs> 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 That's not true, Bruce. I love. I think. Strictly without Bruce would be like Formula One without the crashes. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard about this story before, but um, I imagine there's probably arguments for and against. <laughs> How did uh, Simon respond to Bruce's comments? I'm not gay. <laughs> <laughs> Is everyone giving up mime? <laughs> I can't do that one on my own. <laughs> OK, moving from ham to beef. What excuse did a man from Sunderland use in front of a courtroom this week when charged with stealing a joint of beef? In trouble using the self-scanning system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for goodness. You don't have to be 18 to buy a... This. <laughs> <laughs> this is defendant John Casey claimed that he stole the joint of beef because it reminded him of his dead grandmother. <laughs> she, of course, is no longer topside. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, you know, not as dead as you might expect them to be news, what happened to a lady in Cornwall when she tried to organise a reunion? Did she discover she was the only person of whatever group it was that she was trying to reunite that the was suicide still club of 1930 <laughs> 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 I've had a Christmas card from the war in fact she was the only person who was dead or so they thought the, uh, the local paper had mistakenly printed her name in an obituary for her mother 30 years ago what a terrible shock for that poor lady and for them when she turned up suddenly. I mean, for 30 years they've been having reunions going, I tell you, you'd have loved this, Gladys. Isn't <laughs> Jesus! Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, so this is the spat between Bruce Forsyth and Simon Cowell over children appearing on Britain's Got Talent. According to The Sun, Bruce, he said, youngsters should not be pressured to shine on primetime telly, adding one of them was only 73. <laughs> Brucey has also threatened that he might present a brand new show. He told an audience at a solo performance, I have something else up my sleeve. What, as well as the adrenaline drip? <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> Six men, I imagine, listening very intently to the greatest Prime Minister Britain's ever had. Where? He's telling me they're considered something of a giant in the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> OK, wh where's the story? Well, it's yes. the Middle East envoy, isn't he? He's the yes. envoy on behalf of the Quartet to the Middle East. So I imagine he's been out there spreading peace and people are going to be cynical about that. Yes, they are quite cynical about it. Um, his role in the Middle East has been branded a huge joke. By who? People like you, Ian. Um, yes. Where uh, do we, where, <laughs> where do we not get the Shilcott inquiry, which still hasn't reported four years later. We had an inquiry into the supposed um, doings of Blair, and where is it? Who did we get this information from? John McCarthy. John McCarthy. The Telegraph said that he told the festival last week that Mr Blair's role in supposedly bringing about peace often raised a laugh among Palestinians. So, Matt, I think we've established you're a massive uh, fan of Tony Blair. Um, is this for comic effect, or, or is it real? <laughs> I mean, I don't, well, it's real. <laughs> OK, that's fine. I just wanted to know whether amusement or pity uh, <laughs> was the correct response. Oh, we can do both. <laughs> so who's doing better than Tony Blair at delivering peace to the Middle East? Dappy from Endubs. <laughs> I'm going I'm to tell Tal you. Talisa from um, wherever she's from. Endubs. <laughs> Endubs. Yeah, that, that crowd. Is everyone from Endubs? <laughs> Bouncer. Who's our neighbours? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the Middle East, specifically Iran and Iraq, are, according to the Independent, united in rapture over the love songs of Lionel Richie. <laughs> Iraqis who speak no English can still sing the entire Richie songbook. Hello, is it WMD you're looking for? <laughs> This is the news that uh, Palestinians have been critical of Tony Blair's work bringing peace to the Middle East. According to the Independent, Mr Blair rarely travels to Gaza, citing security reasons. <laughs> Must be someone's job to sort that out. <laughs> <laughs> this week it was revealed that Lionel Richie is extremely popular throughout the Middle East. According to the Independent, when the US invaded Baghdad in 2003, the Iraqis blasted out Lionel Richie's all night long. After which survivors waiting to be dug out of the rubble kept up a constant refrain of Hello, is it me you're looking for? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's now time for the odd one out round. Adolf Hitler. Yes. Robert Mugabe. <laughs> beards and Yoda. The only thing that I've seen about Hitler in recent days is there's a teapot, uh, oh, or yes. kettle rather, that's come out that sort of <coughs> closely resembles Adolf Hitler. Is, there, is the Hitler kettle? It includes the Hitler, Hitler kettle. kettle. I think a good starting place for this is, is Yoda. Yoda. Not not Yoda in his sort of day job, but in a, a sort of a recent sideline he's developed. Nice. Vodafone. Vodafone. Is it? Yes. Stick with advertising. It's not that the sponsors Rice <coughs> Krispies. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Poor old Rice Krispies. <laughs> Snap, crackle, dead. Yeah. No, they, <laughs> uh, they're all uh, officially advertising a product, apart from Adolf Hitler, who is unwittingly advertising a kettle because <laughs> a billboard photo of the kettle looks like him. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does look like Hitler. <laughs> that big empty space in the middle where he <laughs> shot his face off as well. <laughs> Have you got the hot water bottle that looks like Mussolini? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It must be deliberate. It's got to be deliberate. Once you see it, you can't see the kettle anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the kettle's gone. I mean, it's even got a sort of like the salute on the spout, isn't it? <laughs> If you want to accessorise, this would go very well with an Ava Braun sandwich maker. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Mugabe, uh, the Zimbabwean dictator, for those of you who don't know who he is, <laughs> has been helping to advertise a range of clothing in his home country. Oh, yes. Yeah. And according to a rather misleading item in The Scotsman, promotional materials show models pairing the overalls with stilettos, knee-high boots and the dark glasses Mr Mugabe favours. <laughs> I think he favours just the dark glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so beards are the new thing in advertising, according to a Kentucky-based company who have introduced beard advertising. Oh yes, but people have adverts put onto their beards. They like do. Clipped on. And I must say, it looks fabulously impressive. <laughs> it's his face that sells it, isn't it? <laughs> what other beards have been in the news recently? Oh, this is cats. People pose with cats. They, 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 they hold their cat in a certain way so they make it, they make it look like the cat is part of a beard. Yeah, it's called cat bearding. <laughs> <laughs> here's a cat beard. Oh! <laughs> and uh, here's another. <laughs> and um, here's a dog beard. Uh, yes, so the answer is they are all officially advertising a product, apart from Adolf Hitler, who is unwittingly advertising a kettle. <laughs> Obviously, it's only got one boil. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much the kettle that looks like Hitler I object to, it's their marketing slogan, Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Sugar. <laughs> the Mugabe fashion line is the latest in what commentators are calling dictator chic. It's not just in Zimbabwe. Trendsetters in Tehran are regularly seen out wearing their president armour dinner jackets. <laughs> <laughs> now it's time for the missing words round. This week's guest publication is Hot Dip Galvanising. <laughs> it used to be called Dip Galvanising until it was brought by Richard Desmond. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with Superfan spends £25,000 on what? Plastic surgery to look like David Dimbleby. A number of completely unrelated items. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seeing Jed would 140 times. <laughs> well, she thinks she's seen them 140 times. She might just have seen one of them 280 times. <laughs> Next, angler what with a six foot crocodile to celebrate birthday? Duets. <laughs> uh, the answer is slept. Yes. 
You're right to gasp. <laughs> this is the Australian fisherman who thought he'd caught a barramundi fish and found it was a six-foot saltwater crocodile. I recently went fishing in the canal and I caught a barramundi. Then I caught an old boot Tuesday and a shopping trolley <laughs> went. <laughs> Next, the director of fat says what? Can't I be called Mr Chubby Chops instead? <laughs> <laughs> Director of Fat says, put it over there with the rest of the fat. <laughs> Stop asking me, it's obvious. Look, there's a fat pile there. It's, uh, the Director of Fat says BBC TV studios are an introverted kind of building. This is an article about the new BBC studios, which uh, appeared in Hot Dick Galvanising. Fat is an organisation... Uh, yeah. <laughs> And finally, the immersion of what in a bath of what is referred to as what? Limbs in a bath of acid is referred to as a little suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> Steel in a bath of zinc is steel referred is to right. as galvanising. Steel is right for the first one. Galvanising. It's a steel in a bath of molten zinc. Zinc. So I said zinc. It's referred to as yeah. hot And I said galvanising, yeah. but I don't expect any points on this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should have gone on the zinc galvanising show then. <laughs> this is from Hot Dip Galvanising, which features an article about a new sports complex in Ostfildern, Germany, which has a glass and galvanised steel panel that creates a connection between the internal and external environment, or as we call it, a door. <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian's team has five points, but Paul's team has seven points. Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Ian and Matt have this. What's that, Skippy? The guy fell down the stairs and none of us touched him? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul and Miles, get that. <laughs> Bastard wears hat. <laughs> and I leave you with news that it's a job well done for one young man as he successfully ties his own shoelaces. <laughs> Facing a hefty libel payout, Sally and John Burko attempt to raise some extra cash by posing for a naked photo shoot. <laughs> And even at the age of 127, Japan's oldest man can still manage to visit the tanning salon. <laughs> Good night. Get on board for not going out and